Welcome to Heart and Soul Conversations. I am your host and my name is Batanwa Kwababa. Today we are at the residence of the Polish ambassador in South Africa. So come with me to explore Poland. May I confess that the Polish embassy holds a special place in my heart. And this is due to Poland's remarkable contribution to upliftment of rural and township schools in South Africa. You will hear more about this from Ambassador of Poland to South Africa, Ambassador Kantek, who also oversees the following countries, Namibia, Botswana, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Eswatini and Lesotho. Poland itself has a population of a little over 38.2 million people. The capital city is called Warsaw, generally they pronounce it as Vasava. The people are known as the Polish and the people really don't mind being called Poles. Poland is in Europe and their currency is referred to as Zloty. Did you know that Poland holds the oldest constitution in Europe and this was in 1791? And in the world, it is the second after the United States of America. Ambassador Kantak, welcome to Heart and Soul Conversations. Thank you very much. It's a wonderful introduction. I'm very pleased to welcome you at uh, our residence and thank you very much for the opportunity to say a few words about our country and about our presence in uh, South Africa. I'm really happy that we can participate and contribute to the project for the creation of the schools of excellence in Danzane. Uh, we support this project and I'm very happy that we are in. Welcome. Okay, thank you so much as well for hosting us, Ambassador at the Residency. It's such a beautiful residency. It's lush, it's beautiful, it's flowery, it's live, it's alive with flowers. So thank you so much. It says a whole lot about the person and the people that are staying in the residence. Thank you so much. Before we get into the schools, as you've already started, and uh, in Tanzania in particular, I uh, understand that uh, Poland is the one country that is known for its medieval um, uh, buildings. It's a medieval it's a country that is known for its medieval uh, castles, buildings, and all. Could you please take us through to Poland? Just paint a picture of where is Poland? Who are the Polish? Well, you, you started from the, I, I should say, tourist point of view, because we, we really have amazing remnants of the Gothic style architecture in Poland. Uh, we, it reflects our long lasting history, but the country is very diversified. Uh, we offer for tourists lots of attractions. Uh, the popular saying is that uh, uh, Poland is between mountains in the south and the sea in the north. The Baltic Sea. The Baltic Sea in the north. And there is a lot in between. We have a beautiful second largest uh, in Europe after Finland lake districts called Mazurian Lake District. We have shifting dunes, not many people know, and this is a unique not only in Europe. Uh, the dunes uh, on the Baltic Sea coast, they are very similar to those uh, in Sosus Fly in Namibia, Namibia. or between uh, Walvis Bay and uh, Swakop Mund, and this enormous area of uh, sands and sandy uh, hills and you, you when you climb on top of those hills you have, have magnific magnificent view of the sea on one side and then never-ending sands. I just give you a few examples of, of the attractions. Beautiful. You have beautiful cities with, uh, with excellent architecture to mention Kraków in the south, the former capital of Poland, and Gdańsk, the town I come from, in the north of Poland with the Hanseatic architecture, and lots and lots of other attractions, both in the mountains, at the seacoast, with beautiful beaches, and also 
in the center of the country as well. Beautiful. I'm already in Poland. I understand that there are mountains called Zagopana, which are very popular apparently in Poland. What is with Zagopana? What is it that they're offering? Well, the Zagopana is, um, is a um, mountainous town, yeah. the, the uh, most well-known in Poland town in the Polish mountains, in the Tatra mountains, and uh, it offers both excellent conditions for skiing in the winter time mm -hmm. and also lots of very interesting hiking trails of different difficulties just to everybody for for the very ambitious uh, people the very skis. difficult uh, hiking trails and also for the uh, for the older people who like to walk in the mountains and uh, have a beautiful scenic views. Uh, and the name of Zakopane in Polish, uh, it means uh, a place which was buried. And I was I'm, actually about to uh, ask you the meaning, so I'm happy that you're actually talking about the meaning. Well, yes, I'm, I'm not sure about the origin, but knowing Zakopane, I can imagine that the the uh, origin of the of the meaning of the of the name of the town was that Zakopane is very often buried in snow. Uh, so probably this was the this was the original. It's an interesting meaning because in South Africa you probably know that South Africa is about a little over 13, 12 cultural groups, and one of the cultural groups, uh, Basutu and Babedi. They share similar language, so there's a term called kukobana, meaning uniting. So I thought it would have something similar to that, but of course in every country there's a meaning to anything it's and everything. Different, yes. I'm just curious about the shifting dunes. Are they literally shifting in a particular season, or are they just given a name that is saying shifting dunes? No, it's not only a name. They are really shifting uh, several meters every year. Uh, so if you if you go there not too frequently, but from time to time, you can see the difference of the location and of the shape of the of the dunes. It's really amazing feeling to climb up the, the on the top of the of the dunes. They are not as huge. The area is not as big as in in um, in Namibia. But uh, nevertheless, it makes you not much difference because if you are on the top of the dunes, you don't see anything else apart from the sand and from a few places also the beautiful uh, color of the, of the Baltic Sea. All right. Lifestyle in Poland, how is it? Well, po Poland now is a very modern country. Um, we, we belong to, to the European Union, so the influence of the, of the world lifestyle is, uh, is very visible in Poland, especially with the young generation. But on the other hand, uh, Poland is quite a conservative country and we are very much tied and dedicated to our traditions. Mm, for example, this, this is the time of the of the very important tradition in Poland, which is the time of the Christmas. Oh, the Christmas season. The Christmas season, what some people call it a festive season, but for most of Polish people it's still a Christmas mm -hmm. uh, season, and we celebrate it, uh, uh, we, we take it very seriously. It's, uh, it's a time for families, for unity, for love. Mm -hmm. the, most wonderful, most colorful time of the year. That's why probably you said that the residence looks so colorful. It's also because of, of the decorations uh, to mark the celebrations of the Christmas time. Although this year, the Christmas time, for obvious reasons, because of the pandemic, is very much different. Uh, but nevertheless, Christmas is not cancelled and we are happy to celebrate it even if we are not as joyful as we used to be in any other years. All 
Right, Ambassador. Thank you so much about that information. I also find, found another find in, in, in Poland that um, children, when they're named, you don't just come up with a name. And I'm curious if Jesus Christ was born in Poland, what name would he have? <laughs> Well, I, I, I never thought about this. I, I, I think Jesus would have the name of Jesus, of course, still. Uh, still. And the, the most popular names in Poland are still very traditional names. Uh, there, there is a, a list of, uh, of names which are allowed for, for the young baby to, 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 to be named. Uh, so it's not that, uh, that the young baby can be called whatever the parents want to. Now, Ambassador, I'm just curious about people who would love to travel. Now that you've painted this picture that is very diverse with the modernity, with the origins of a particular Gotha period and a whole lot of traditions that are actually... So I'm already ready. I'm ready to travel to, 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 to Poland. I believe that many of the viewers would wish to travel. What are... Um, the requirements for people wanting to travel to Poland? What would be the requirements? Well, uh, we are most welcome, of course, to visit Poland, and those, all South Africans are, are most welcome to come as a tourist to, to, to visit uh, that beautiful country. And uh, they should follow the guide, uh, guidelines uh, for, for tourists wanting to visit Poland. Uh, the most important, to, to, I think, to emphasize is that Poland belongs to, to the Schengen group of countries. Schengen group consists of 26 uh, countries, most of them members of the European Union. Union. With some exceptions, there are, I think, three countries which don't belong to uh, European Union, like Switzerland, Norway, and Iceland, and they belong to Schengen countries. Mm. It means that uh, uh, somebody who gets the visa to, uh, to, Poland. to Poland, for example, is allowed as a tourist to uh, travel to, to, any, of to the any of the other Schengen, Schengen countries within 90 days, because this is the validity of the, of the uh, visa. So it's a great opportunity, of course, because you can explore the, the whole of Europe almost having one visa. The same, you can have a visa to France or Italy, and you can come and visit Poland. I was trying some greetings, and I learned it at that time, and then I said, OK, no, I need three months now to learn <laughs> Poland. So the language spoken in Poland is Polish. For people wishing to study, what sort of preparations are done uh, where someone really uh, wants to acclimatize to the language or wants to learn the language? Well, yes, some of the stipendiums we, we offer to, to uh, African students, uh, and I, I, I should say about the, the area uh, which, uh, which I, our embassy covers, mm -hmm. um, the eight countries you, you have mentioned before. Uh, and the, the stipendiums uh, covers all cost of study and accommodation in Poland. And the requirement for those students is that they uh, have to learn Polish. Uh, you are right, of course, uh, it's not an easy language, I must admit. Uh, I don't believe you, anybody can learn it in three months, but one year should be enough. And usually for those uh, who want to study in Poland and get the stipendium, they have one year preparatory where for the whole year they study Polish language. And the idea is that uh, if, if the students learn Polish language, they can easier accommodate, assimilate, they can uh, learn the country much deeper uh, than those who come to Poland and don't speak Polish language and live in the country for a few years. But nevertheless, there, are, there is also a, a very broad offer of uh, studies at different kind of universities. 
medical, economic, uh, general universities for students who have to pay a uh, fee for their study and for their accommodation. And this is also a very popular kind of, uh, uh, of offer uh, because our level of education is very high. We have excellent universities. Uh, so there, 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 is, there is a very good opportunity of, of the high level of, uh, of education and at the same time the costs are much lower both of the study and uh, of uh, cost of living in Poland than in uh, any other Western European countries. And another very important thing is that uh, those students who are graduated at uh, Polish universities, they have opened door to continue their study or postgraduate studies, studies in any other a European country. In essence, it opens doors. It opens doors. It opens doors to other European countries. Uh, y yes, yes, it does, and, and it's, it guarantees a high, high level of uh, education. Another curious find is that Poland is the oldest constitution in Europe, which was found uh, founded in 1791. Could you please take us through what was happening at that time? of the realization of the Constitution? Uh, indeed, the Constitution, uh, we call it the 3rd of May Constitution, is, uh, is, a, is a very important uh, fact in our history. That's why we celebrate our National Day. Also here in South Africa, we have a big reception uh, around 3rd of May to commemorate the fact of the uh, 3rd May Constitution, which was uh, adopted by the Polish Parliament in 17, 3rd of May 1791. Uh, the Constitution was, as you have mentioned, first in the Europe and, and uh, second in the world after the United States. It was based on the Enlightenment values and one of the articles of the Constitution stated that all authority of in human society takes its origin from the will of the people. In other words, it means that instead of taking interest of the very few, the governments should or must put the nation first. It the was majority. A, it, the majority of the, of the society, of the nation. Uh, today it seems obvious that when the constitution was adopted about 230 years ago, it was a revolutionary. Uh, and the, the fact threatened the other governments, other countries in Europe. So they joined their forces to against this menace. And uh, Austria, Russia and Prussia invaded Poland, partitioned it, and for 123 years, Poland was erased from the map of Europe. Uh, Poland was reinstated in 1918, after at the end of the First World War. What, what is um, outstanding is that throughout all the, that time, Polish language existed, Polish culture existed and spirit of patriotism within the Polish people who didn't have their own country survived and then Poland was reinstated. So it was a very, very important fact at that time, not only uh, for Poland but for, 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 for the whole of uh, Europe, the very brave 
modern democratic constitution was adopted in Poland. Press, it was so solidarity of the people made it possible. And through the embracement of your heritage, through the spheres that you mentioned, made it possible. I mean, your language is still standing in other traditions. Even though you went through what you went through. Yes, the language is spoken by, by uh, it's difficult to say, of course, uh, exactly how, how many millions uh, um, Poles, but not only the, about 40 million living in Poland, 40 million living in Poland, but also we have a big diaspora in several other countries in the, in the world, mainly in uh, in the United States, the uh, but also in uh, in UK, in Germany, in many other countries, Australia, including South Africa, where we have a uh, Polish community of about 25,000 uh, That's a lot. Polish people. It's quite That's a lot. That's a big community. Yes, it is. It is a big community. Awesome. And they contribute to the, to the life and to the uh, achievements of, uh, of uh, South Africa. Impressive. Now, Ambassador, now that you are in South Africa, let's dovetail and take it from there. Your ascension to ambassadorial, to the ambassadorial post. I've learned that you were in business. And I've also learned that uh, generally there are two ways of one, of a person becoming an ambassador. It is either a career diplomat or a political diplomat. And so what are you? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm considered as a, as a political appointee. All right. Uh, this is not very unusual because uh, I, I think I saw the latest figure that now about 30% of ambassadors are political appointees. Mm -hmm. So I'm considered as a political appointee, although I have never been uh, a politician. I never belonged in my life to any political party. And I'm, I'm very proud that I feel independent all my life. Uh, as you've mentioned, I, uh, I, was, I was in business. Uh, first 10 years after graduation, I worked as a shipbuilding engineer in the Gdańsk shipyard. And then at the beginning of transformation, when the communism collapsed in Poland uh, in 1989, I started my own private firm, private activity. Uh, corporate finance consultancy, the company which I started with two other my f of my friends uh, still exists. Uh, and on the other hand, I, I had served for 22 years as a British honorary consul to Poland, so, so I had some experience in the, in the uh, diplomatic, di di diplomatic uh, spheres. Uh, so combining it, uh, I think it gave me a very good background to start this, my first ambassadorial posting here in this beautiful country, and I'm very proud of it. Now you are not just in a country, in a continent, because you've got eight more countries. Uh, well, yes, it, it, it is almost half of the... <laughs> Part so of, then part of, Africa. of the continent. <laughs> yes, 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 that, yes. That's, that's true. So how are you finding South Africa? It's an amazing country and I'm very happy that uh, I had a chance to, to come here. I'm fascinated about uh, South Africa in all aspects of, uh, of uh, life here. Um, the, beautiful parts of the country which is known that uh, this is like the whole world in the miniature because there is everything here. Uh, I said before that Polish, Poland is, uh, is a very diverse country but uh, uh, South Africa is 
many times more diversified than Poland. It's of course uh, much bigger, almost four times bigger than Poland, but the in terms of size, in, in terms of land, yes, mm. of, of land sizes. Uh, so it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful country, and uh, and people are very friendly. Uh, the, the, the culture is so diversified. The history is so interesting. There are lots of commonalities with Poland, lots of similarities uh, with Poland. And also we started our transition, Poland after collapse of communism in 1989 and South Africa after collapse of apartheid in 1994. Uh, and we continue our road to democracy, actually, both countries are, are democratic countries, of course, uh, but, uh, but we are young democracies and we face lots of similar problems. And what is, what is common to, to us, to, to, to both of our countries, that is that we, the both countries are proud of their de democracy, proud of their regional position, important position, and proud of their development. Awesome. What has been your most fascinating experience in South Africa? Well, there, there are challenges almost every day. <laughs> and lots of, lots of them are fascinating. Uh, well, f for me, st starting, starting my mission here was like, uh, Starting a very new part of my of my life, uh, because well, I realized when I came that everything is is different. The, the climate is uh, different. The the surrounding area, the plants, uh, the birds, the language, the the people, the problems. Everything is uh, is different, and that's that's very fascinating. Fascinating, and also uh, stimulating. Mm -hmm. It gives a lot of new power to face all those challenges. Uh, most of them are very encouraging. Any culture shock that you experienced? Well, the. the the racial divisions are, I think, now I feel it deeper than I thought. Uh, of course, uh, the whole world observed the development of the situation in 1994, the building up of the Rainbow Nation, and I and I thought that uh, the divisions. In, be, in within those 20 years mm -hmm. were much more buried mm -hmm. and now I realize in, in many situations that they still exist in many different forms like for example in, in one street there is one end that there are restaurants where there is a majority of white people and the other end where there is majority or almost uh, uh, Africans and lots of uh, this, this kind of um, differences. I wouldn't say that it, it is a shock, but it is something interesting, which uh, which uh, make you to think deeper about the country and and encourage you to learn more, to read more about this, to speak more with ordinary people to learn as much as possible, because it is fascinating. Mm -hmm. The diversity of culture, diversity of, of languages, of uh, dresses, of looks, everything. Mm -hmm. What is South Africa known for in Poland? Well, so, so South Africa is quite well known in, in Poland and for various reasons, depends on what uh, someone is interested in. Mm -hmm. um, 
definitely is is well known for for its wildlife for the game reserves for for the wild animals the big five the Kruger Park is very very well known and the beauty of uh, Cape Town and the Cape uh, Wineland uh, Winelands uh, is very well known uh, Africa for many people uh, is known for diamonds and golds the the precious uh, metals and, and some other minerals as well uh, for the beautiful scenery in other parts of the of the country for Kruger and to the investors uh, to the investors and also, especially I remember, it was a lots of uh, information about uh, Professor Chris Barnard and the first transplantation the of, the, of the transplant of the heart, mm. which was a great achievement in the world scale. And it was very much associated, still is, I think, with uh, South Africa. What's your favorite South African place? Have you toured South Africa? You've moved, you sound like you've toured a whole lot of South Africa. Yes, I'm, I'm lucky that uh, before uh, lockdown I had the chance to, to visit many parts of uh, South Africa and uh, I wouldn't repeat the Cape Winelands, because everybody says this, this is so beautiful. So I think my own discovery is uh, Limpopo. And uh, the area of Volkberg, uh, Waterberg, uh, Zanin, Hayton, Hayton, is it Hayton? Hayton'sberg, yes. uh, Mahubas, Mahubas Kluv. Ah. And the uh, Probably interesting story about this area and how I've heard it, that this is, is beautiful. But the interesting story is that uh, at the auction I bought uh, two paintings of uh, Mudraji. I was getting there, <laughs> but please go ahead. At, at that time I didn't I didn't know about Mudraji, but I got interested. I wanted to buy uh, lots of things to remember South Africa and I got interested about those paintings and then I learned that uh, Mudraji is a rain queen uh, very popular in the Limpopo area uh, so I bought those uh, stunning portraits, those portraits mm. and then I decided to go and see the area where Mudraji because I got interested in, 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 in her life story and this was the uh, Mahubas Kloof. And I found that this is extremely beautiful part of South Africa, especially for, for the manicured gardens, which resemble the wine land, lands. Uh, but instead of uh, wine plants, there are avocados, lemons, oranges, lots of other things neatly managed, beautiful hilly, hilly area, very green. So it was my discovery. And then also other parts of Limpopo, like uh, South Pansberg, uh, hills up in the north near Louis Trichard. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, I'm happy that I had a chance to go to, to the most north located lodge in the Kruger Park, just a few kilometers from the Limpopo River. Mm -hmm. And this was my dream, always to, to go there, because there is another connection between South Africa, or in particular Limpopo and Poland, mm -hmm. uh, not because of people, because, but because of birds. Oh. Our most popular birds, storks, the, the big, the storks, big birds yes. with the red legs the, and the red uh, the, beak. The long beak as well. Beak as well. Uh -huh. 
the, the stalks are born in Poland, in some other places in Europe also, but mainly in the north east part of Poland. Uh, and they have just two or two and a half months to grow up, to learn flying, and they fly over 10,000 kilometers from Poland to the Limpopo area. Most of them to the Limpopo area to avoid Polish winter, which is quite se too severe for them. So they migrate. All they, they migrate. The and then when winter ends up in Poland in uh, April, they fly back from Limpopo to, 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 to Poland. So it was an amazing story. Smart. And uh, I am very, very pleased to. I, I had been there and I saw the, the storks many of them. Mm -hmm. Of course, I couldn't know which came from Poland, Poland. And, <laughs> and which no, but it's, a, it's a very interesting. So Limpopo is, is, uh, is the part of uh, South Africa I would recommend everybody to, to go and visit. And especially that from, uh, from Pretoria is not that far, it only takes three hours to to, to Take R71, to, to yes. going there. Now, whilst you were at uh, Mahuba's Croft, did you visit the uh, Zanin area? Did you go to the Saikad uh, Resort, the Mujaji Saikad Reserve? Yes, actu actually I, I, I wanted to visit the, the place of the Rain Queen of, of Mujaji, but uh, the village is closed, they don't allow anybody to go in. But next actually to, 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 the, to the very small settlement where Mujaji lived is a unique uh, Saikat re reserve, uh, probably the, the, the world's oldest or the biggest gathering of the mm. very, very old uh, cycles. So it's another, of course, attra attraction. attraction. Yes. Ah. So what else did you do in, in Mahuba's Cliff? Well, I, I did so some hiking in, in uh, other beautiful There's places. There's a beautiful garden as well like, there. Like, like Chirio the Garden, garden. Ah. Kugerstan, uh, uh, Heinertsberg, uh, several it's nice beautiful. restaurants. So it's a, it's a very nice area to, to especially to, to go for the long weekend not far from Pretoria. Uh, and of course there are lots of other magnificent places in South Africa like uh, Blyde River Canyon with uh, God's Window and Burke uh, potholes as an example. Lots of private game reserves, uh, Drakensberg. I, I was a few times in Drakensburg, Cathedral Peak and uh, Champagne Castle. Uh, amazing. Thank you so much, Ambassador. In terms of tourism, I see that you've taught the country and you really love South Africa and the fact that your stocks come home. I'll say you come home and from one they, home, from to, home another. to another home. Yeah. <laughs> Polish people now coming outside of Poland visiting South Africa. How is that? Well, I, I don't remember exact figure now. Um, it's, uh, it's not th that many tourists as uh, uh, I would like to attract to come to South Africa from Poland. Um, Especially of the of the big offer, touristic offer for for, for tourists uh, in in this beautiful country. Uh, so there is still a lot we we have to do. One of the one of the um, downturns is that uh, there are no direct flights between Poland and uh, and uh, South, South Africa, Africa, which of course would would make easier for, for tourists to, 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 to travel. Esteemed, esteemed uh, Polish icons. South Africa is known for all the things that is known for. I'm just wondering and curious. I once traveled to another country and there I was asked where I'm coming from and then I said South Africa and then people didn't know where South Africa was and then I said Mandela, Mandela. And then still they didn't know about Madiba and I was a little bit deflated, I must say. So I'm just curious if they know about Madiba 
and um, if Madiba is known in Poland, because in South Africa, we 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 are Madiba, we are a Madiba nation, and yes, he is a global icon, not only for South Africans, but I'm just curious if he is known in in Poland, and not just make an assumption like I did in another country that I went to, where I thought that he would be known, and regrettably he wasn't known. Yes. Uh, Madiba is very well known in Poland. Uh, of course, as a Nobel Prize uh, awarded, also Archbishop Desmond Tutu is a very well known name in, in Poland. B both of them, because of their achievements in the struggle for, for racial equality, for independence of, uh, of uh, South Africa, for human rights. Uh, so it, bo bo both persons are very extremely uh, appreciated and, and very well known. Uh, also are mostly respected for, for the achievement of the peaceful transition from the oppressive system of apartheid to the free, independent, democratic South Africa. It's a, it's a great achievement and it deserves the, the highest respect and the respect is given to, to uh, Madiba. I know few Polish icons. Lewandowski. <laughs> yes. I'm not sure if I pronounced him correctly. <laughs> so congratulations on such achievements as a country because he is your ambassador in a way, the ambassador of the nation of your country. So congratulations on that. I also know of, uh, I used to say chopping, but I was corrected and say, no, 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 it's not chopping, it's Chopin. <laughs> <laughs> so who um, who um celebrated icons that come to mind when someone says Poland, who are the few that you would say, you know what, these are the icons of Poland and their achievements? I, I think the most celebrated icon of uh, Poland is uh, um, Archbishop Karol Wojtyła, who then became the Pope John Paul II and, and now is a saint John, John Paul II, uh, uh, head of the Catholic Church, uh, devoted his, his life not only to the religion, but he's, uh, he's also a, a, a highest moral authority for the, for the Catholic community, not only in, in Poland, but uh, globally, and he is beloved by by Poles and lots of people all over the world. You mentioned Chopin, of course, Chopin is one of the greatest composers. I think uh, piano, he's the... the, the Creative the music mo most, industry. Most, most uh, well-known. Renowned, renowned and, revered and artists. <laughs> the, the best composers in, uh, composer in the, in the, in the history. Mm -hmm. We have lots of, of, uh, of names. Uh, which, which are renowned and uh, worldwide recognized. Uh, let's say about women, uh, Maria yes. Skłodowska. She was the first woman ever awarded Nobel Prize. It was 1903, if I remember well. And then she was a chemist and physicist research on radiology and discovered polonium and radium and she, as I mentioned she was the, the first ever woman awarded Nobel Prize and then she was the first person awarded Nobel Prize twice because she got also the second Nobel Prize a few years later. In the field of music, we have lots of famous... Power to the women. <laughs> Power to the women, of course. I mean, it was 1903 science I'm very pleased to, to, yes. to mention women, of course, yes. absolutely. 
Um, but in, in the in the we, we are very musical uh, people, I think. We have lots of very famous names apart from Chopin is uh, is uh, Szymanowski, Bogusławski. I think in the creative industry as well, there are so much Polish people that are very influential, that are revered, especially uh, movies directors. Movie movies directors, yes, yes, yes. yes. That, that's right, ah. that's right. And in, in, in sport also, you, you you said about Lewandowski yes. is is. Uh, biggest soccer player in, in Poland, he's in Polish history now. My son loves Lewandowski. <laughs> I actually had this from him. And it was, it was a really phenomenal achievement that he broke 10 or 12 years domination of the duo Messi, uh, Messi and Ronaldo, Ronaldo as the, the best football player in the, in the world. So congratulations to, to Lewandowski. Uh, one of the current in sport achievements was uh, Iga, Iga Świątek, very young lady. Uh, she won the French Open on the Roland Garros in, in Paris. And uh, there are lots of other names. Thank you so much. And then, Ambassador, we've learned, I'm just seeing your tree coming out. I'm not sure if it's your side card <laughs> of your garden. <laughs> Yes, right. we, we have uh, three cycads here as well. Not that old uh, like the one in uh, Mudraji Kluv, but uh -huh. beautiful also. It's got, it's, uh, um, I said earlier in my introduction that Poland MC, your team in the office, your leadership, has really touched many lives in the Eastern Cape province. Um, in the country as well because of the contribution you have done as the Polish aid, as Poland, as Polish embassy in contributing in the upliftment of rural and township schools in South Africa and we truly appreciate such contribution. A school of course was transformed in a number of ways from uh, classrooms, uh, making classrooms to be a proper learning environments, creating proper environments for teachers to want to be in conducive teaching environments. As Shed Mashalogu was uh, one of, uh, was the school actually that benefited from the Polish Aid Fund. So we truly are thankful. And hence I was saying, you have a special heart, a special space in my heart as a country and um, with the impact um, at this stage, yes, it's about four months down the line that you've done that, but the school already is reaping the benefits in this sense that uh, residents in that community have noticed that there's something that has happened in the school. There's an improvement. There is excitement from teachers that are feeling that they are... It's almost like a reward to say that well done to the work that you do in the conditions that you are doing it and so thank you so much for the support. Uh, not only that, also I, I read there's an article that was on Daily Dispatch newspaper where the embassy invited a young lady, 17 year old girl from this a province. Eastern Cape is considered as the poorest province and it shouldn't because of the resources that it has but what you've done as the embassy, you hosted, you made sure that this young soloist opera singer comes and performs during your your annual concert festi festi festival and so we appreciate that as the people and the people in a way of Tanzania and Eastern Cape as well, they truly appreciate such contributions. I'm just, um, I don't want to use the word overwhelmed by suggestions and kindness, but we truly appreciate. I just want to find out from your heart what, what inspired you, what inspired the embassy to contribute to, <coughs> to the community, to rural and township schools in the country. Well, thank you very much for the appreci appreciation. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy that we, we can support the school in the very poor area of uh, Eastern Cape, the Mdansane uh, Township. Uh, 
I, I went uh, a year and a half ago. It was an initiative uh, of uh, European Union ambassador, Swiss ambassador, and I joined them. Um, and we had a meeting with over 80 principals of the schools in, in Danzane. Uh, very poor area. Uh, learners learning in a very, very poor conditions, I would say that. It reminded me also the schools I remember from the some of the rural areas in Poland in my childhood. Uh, and we decided together that we, we would do our best to, to help in, to create the more conducive in, environment uh, in many aspects uh, for, for the teachers of, of this poor uh, township areas and for the learners to to to, to learn in, in much better conditions with uh, with better technology modern equipment mm, uh, so we're happy to join this program of uh, creation of the school of uh, excellence uh, it is one of the projects we we were involved in in South, in South Africa and also in some other Southern African countries, mainly in Zambia and, and Zimbabwe. And apart from financial su support, we would like to to identify the talents like Siminkiwa uh, Nelly. And uh, I'm very pleased that we invited her to perform at our Christmas and New Year concert, it gave her opportunity to perform for a much bigger and very new audience than she is used to. And she moved hearts of everybody, I think, because of her beautiful soprano voice and also her expression. It was unbelievable that uh, she was only, she is only 17 year uh, old uh, girl singing in a beautiful, melodious uh, uh, soprano voice. It was an excellent performance. And uh, I, I, I dream to uh, help her to continue her career. Of course, she, I noticed her during that visit during the meeting with the principals of the school, schools. Um, and she, she's already known in, in Danzane, but not as much as widely as she deserved to be known because of, of her amazing talent. So we would do our best to help her to... To groom to, her better to, to and more. Better to develop her career. I would love to say it in Polish, to say Dziękuję. <laughs> thank you, am I right? Dziękuję, yes, you're Dziękuję, right. Dziękuję, yes, well. yes. Thank you, so many, thank you, so many Dziękujes <laughs> that, um, that, uh, <clears throat> that I would love to actually say. Uh, I have no Polish words to say other than Dziękuję. <laughs> so truly, truly That's appreciate it. That's more than enough, it. thank you. Yes. And then your heart desires now, Ambassador, as we are moving to the close of our conversation. What are your heart desires? Well, heart desire at this very difficult time of pandemic is that uh, the, this disaster end up as soon as possible and we come to the normal life and we can continue our efforts to to bring, in, in my situation, to bring both our countries closer in lots of uh, different aspects, economic and personal relations, tourists and so on, uh, because we, we really deserve it and we, we wait for it. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for hosting us. We truly appreciate the hospitality 
the kindness you keep on sharing with our country, with the countries of Africa. We truly appreciate your presence in South Africa, your presence in Africa. And as you are saying, collaborations are the key for in all sectors, economy, economic sector and other sectors. And with that being said, thank you so much for hosting us. And uh, we're looking forward to working more with uh, Poland, not only to receive, but also to contribute in ways uh, that would um, benefit Poland, where they would say there once was uh, an ambassador, there once, there once was a representation of our country in South Africa, and this is how it is yielding fruit. And uh, so we are fully behind you. We thank you so much for your presence. And that being said at home, thank you so much and keep on watching these conversations. Uh, very exciting and many more to come. Thank you so much for watching and being with us.